This is another example of the importance of venoplasty uh, when proceeding with a, an upgrade, uh, either adding an LV lead, as in this case, or any lead, or even his pacing. And what frequently happens is people will get access and it'll be not easy to move and so they'll try to make it work. Um, and so the lesson is to not debate but just go ahead and dilate. So in this case, uh, the upgrade uh, access felt tight and the debate was should we do venoplasty? Uh, and again, the, the attending physician that I was proctoring said he thought he could make it wait, make it work. So after an hour of struggling, and actually an hour and a half of struggling to make it work, it was agreed that we would uh, do venoplasty. And you can see how tight this is and how much this would impair catheter manipulation. So we used an 8 millimeter by 4 centimeter non-compliant balloon, rated the burst pressure. In this case, it was 20 atmospheres. And you can see the stenosis and how much difficulty this would cause with catheter manipulation. So the important point here is you want to start uh, with the balloon so that the tip of the balloon is sticking out into the SVC and then dilate from the anomenate SVC junction until you see the balloon visible uh, in the pocket. And once this is done, then the access is as free as if it was an initial implant uh, and catheter manipulation is not something that hinders uh, lead implantation. This turned out to be a fairly complicated case, but ultimately the lead was implanted successfully and we would have never made any progress had we not uh, performed venoplasty. So in my experience, failure to do venoplasty is a fairly common cause of prolonged cases as well as ultimate failures. And I think you'll find it very helpful once you add this to your uh, armamentarium.